Anyone that has been associated with Jehovah's Witnesses for any length of time is well aware of their two-class system. You have the heavenly help, which is the 144,000, and then you have the vast majority of Jehovah's Witnesses, which have have a uh, they're looking forward to an earthly hope in paradise. Sounds delightful, but is paradise really all it's cracked up to be? Don't sue me, bro. Hello and welcome to X-Witness a Week. I'm your host, Jonathan. I hope that you are having an amazing day. Before we get into it, I'd just like to remind you to please like, share, and subscribe, and um, help the algorithm do its thing and get this out to as many people as possible. Uh, also, if you would like to comment, I'd appreciate hearing your thoughts on Paradise, which is what this is about. Now, this video is going to be discussing some of the things that an active witness may or may not be thinking about when it comes to the paradise hope held out by Watchtower. Everyone, of course, has their own idea of what heaven is like, and it's the subject of lots of movies and lots of TV shows, and usually there's people in white robes and floating on clouds, and some have wings and others, they don't have wings. Even in illustrations from Jehovah's Witnesses, they, they depict this walking on a cloud type setting. Usually there's lots of angels floating around. Maybe there's some pearly gates that are at the entrance of heaven. It all seems a bit strange to me, but hey, only if you go there anyway. Now, Paradise Earth, that's where it's at. There are no shortages of illustrations by Jehovah's Witnesses to depict the earthly paradise. Over the years, it, the look has changed a bit with, you know, different changes in style. But, you know, it's about the same. Sometimes you find people in traditional costumes uh, from various cultures. I've seen lots of, of people dressed up like traditional Mexican uh, costumes. I've seen uh, Japanese kimonos. I've seen African garb, that sort of thing. So those are just a few, to, just to name a few. Uh, but at other times you have more Western styles of dress, like tan khakis and uh, polos and sundresses, that sort of thing. And you might find a lot of wild animals, so many that it looks like a zoo exploded nearby. Other times you've got sort of a park-like setting with people walking their dogs. Regardless of what you see, you're always going to find those happy people that don't seem to have a care in the world. Let's talk about trouble in paradise number one. If the survivors of the Great Tribulation and Armageddon are to truly enjoy the new world, someone has to clean up all the destruction that was wrought by the fireballs and spirit creatures. There's going to be years of cleaning up dead bodies of all the massacred men, women, and children in the future for some people. Now think about it. Seeing one murdered child can be enough to haunt a police officer or a paramedic or a doctor for their entire lives. Imagine multiplying that by 8 billion. That's got to kind of mess you up. So in a world where you would have to not feel in order to deal with the natural consequences of seeing that sort of thing, that doesn't sound like a place that I would want to be. Okay, trouble in paradise number two. If current numbers are accurate, there are approximately 8 million Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide. Of these, many have family members who have left their religion. They have disassociated themselves due to philosophical and doctrinal reasons. They've left and they have no intention of ever returning. There are some who were disfellowshipped, and after they left, they came to realize that there's a lot of dirty secrets that the Watchtower has, has hidden, um, and they also refuse to return to Watchtower. That's my case. Now, while there has been some recent changes to the, to the doctrine of whether you're going to be destroyed if you're not a Jehovah's Witness, and you could 
change your mind and at the last minute switch over, the thing that has remained the same is when it comes to apostates. If you are an apostate, you lose out on that opportunity to have to be part of that resurrection of the righteous and unrighteous that it talks about in Acts 24.15. If you believe the death is anything like the Jehovah's Witnesses talk about, then you don't see, you don't hear, you don't feel, you're just gone. So now imagine that you're an active Jehovah's Witness and you have family members that spoke out or changed their mind how is it going to make you feel knowing that your family that you love so much have zero chance of being with you in paradise? Are you going to miss the family that can't be there? How can you be truly happy knowing that they could have been raised up, but they didn't have that option? Personally, that doesn't sound like an ideal situation either when it comes to the people that I love. I would imagine you probably feel something like that too. Trouble in paradise number three. When I think of paradise, I think of like a vacation, maybe hanging out on a beach, getting some sun, doing some swimming or going hiking in a green forest or or climbing rocks or something cool like that. Um, maybe seeing some mountains. I think about travel, seeing interesting cultural sites throughout the world, seeing certain buildings and monuments, things like that modern cities in different countries. Now, what are you going to get to see in this new and improved world after the fireballs have destroyed everything and it's cleaned up, but it's sanitized. It's a lot of kingdom halls and log cabins. You don't get to live a life of leisure. You probably wouldn't get to do much of this hanging out on the beach thing. You have to teach newly resurrected ones about Jehovah's organization. You've, you're going to be doing a lot of construction work. And also, you see a lot of modern conveniences in the illustrations. Those things just don't materialize out of thin air. Someone has to make them. Someone has to maintain things. So, who's making this stuff? You, probably at some point. And as far as the, where you get to live on Earth, uh, because there's going to be a lot of people that are resurrected, apparently. Billions. And they have to live somewhere. According to a talk that I heard not too long ago, you might be assigned to a city. That doesn't sound great. Because... Who are you going to be living with? A bunch of Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, I like for my business to be my business, not to be the business of my neighbor. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of nosy people. You probably know some. All I can say is, no thanks. Being assigned to live somewhere? That doesn't sound great. If I was going to be a scenario where I could live in paradise... I'd want to pick it. Being assigned to live somewhere, that doesn't really sound like freedom to me. It sounds like a lot of rules that you'd have to adhere to, which brings me into trouble in paradise number four, and that is the issue of universal sovereignty. Universal sovereignty is apparently the whole point of why mankind has suffered for thousands of years, because Jehovah and Satan, well, they had to hash out who has the right to rule. And in order to do that, Satan had to be allowed to mess up everything for the world and influence mankind. And children had to suffer because of that. Why there couldn't have been a do-over is beyond me. And save a lot of trouble for the innocents. Satan and his demons are locked up for a thousand years and they get let out. They get to, to influence humans once again. And so the ones that decide to go with Satan, they all get destroyed. They're gone forever. And the question has been answered. 
So now imagine you disagree with something. You're unhappy with your assignment. Uh, you're going to say something, perhaps, but should you? Because um, what now stops God from just destroying you so that he doesn't have a repeat of the things of the past? Living like that feels like the illustration I use for the thumbnail, where it's, it's paradise, but it's a prison. You can't act up because the warden and the guards are going to probably um, take care of you if you act up and don't follow the rules. Again, personally, I would not want to live in a place where I couldn't voice my opinion or have a different thought. Because right now, as active Jehovah's Witnesses, if you voice your opinion to the governing body or to the elders who represent the governing body, you get shunned. You get disfellowshipped for apostasy. And that's just now. What about when you're dealing with the ruler of the universe? You're going to get squished. Trouble in Paradise number five. What makes life special? Well, it's the, facts, it's the fact that we only have so much of it. If someone wastes their life and they look back and have regrets at the end of their life, it's sad because they had so much potential and it was just, it was just piddled away. There's just nothing to show for it. So, for example, maybe you have been doing laundry for a cult in upstate New York for 50 years. What do you have to show for it at the end of your life? Maybe you might look back and regret the time that you spent doing that. So how does a million years make any point of your life special when it's all the same? Like you could look back and remember uh, a trip with your family to go visit grandma. When I was a kid, we would go visit my grandmother who lived in in Kentucky. And it was about a seven-hour drive, seven, eight-hour drive. And I remember those different times to go visit my grandmother and my great aunt. And, um, you know, it was an enjoyable time with the family. And I'm thinking if I can remember things like that and they're special, if I had now forever... You're not going to remember certain things. They're special. It's just going to kind of just be another blip in the map of your life that you're not going to recall. And this kind of leads into my last thing that I wanted to talk about. So it's Trouble in Paradise number six, is that the universe is big. The universe is very old. And it's not forever, though. Science tells us that the universe has an age. The last time I checked, it was something like 13.5 billion years. And the size of the universe, the last time I checked, was something like 93 billion light years across because of the expansion of the universe. Because of that expansion of the universe, everything is getting farther apart. It's like a thinning balloon, and eventually everything will burn out. Locally, our sun is about 4.5 billion years old, and it's about halfway through its lifespan. At some point, it's going to use up its fuel to where the gravity that holds it together will be lessened, and it will expand to turn into a red giant, and it will eat our planet and everything on the Earth will be destroyed. Eventually, it will collapse in itself and it will explode. And that really is the future for all stars. So at some point, the universe is going to go dark. It may be trillions upon trillions of years in the future, but that's less than forever. At some point, it could actually come crashing together to a tiny point, and it could all start over again. We don't know. There's lots of theories on on that sort of thing. Not that this is a science pod not that this is a science video, 
But um, the point is, is forever is a concept that really can't come true. So where does everlasting life on a paradise earth fit into this? Well, it doesn't. So what do we have? Well, we've got some beautiful places on Earth right now, and we have the life that we have right now. Life can be pretty fulfilling. It can be beautiful. It can be difficult. It can be unfair, but it's what we got, and we have to make the best of what we have now, and not looking towards a forever future that, according to what we know, isn't even possible. And that's all I got on that. I guess the end of the universe is a good way, good, good way to end this. So uh, thank you for watching. And again, uh, please like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. And uh, comment below and let me know what you think, what, what your thoughts are on, on Paradise. And um, I just want to say that I appreciate all of you watching. I, I hope that you make the best of what you have. And I will catch you next time. So bye for now.